Hey, what's up guys? Phil here from Inspire Fitness. Welcome back to the channel. So we have another meal prep video for you guys today. In today's recipe, we got Japanese curry with chicken and shrimp katsu. We'll show you guys the nutrition facts along the way. So let's get cooking up guys. So the ingredient list will be down in the description below. So make sure you get everything before you start this recipe. So we got one long bell pepper, one carrot, two zucchinis, one regular bell pepper, and some white mushrooms to finish. We got a fully peeled potato and a Japanese squash. We got a roughly chopped whole onion, one cup of broccoli, half a cup of sweet corn, one pound of chicken breast, eight ounces of skewered shrimp, one cup of flour, three eggs, two tablespoons of garlic, one cup of Japanese breadcrumbs, two tablespoons of garlic salt. We got a couple cubes each of that good old fashioned instant curry. We got the spicy kind and the regular kind. There's a ton of MSG in here, but it's totally fine to eat. So now let's get into the most important part about meal prepping, which really comes down to having everything ready before we start cooking. We're just going to be chopping up everything into rough pieces. Everything in here shrinks a lot in water, so there's no need to cut them too small. So let's change our chopping board and get to prepping our chicken. Most chicken breasts you get at the market are usually pretty huge, and when it comes to baking with the breadcrumb coating, you tend to want to have these pretty thin to prevent the crust from burning in the oven. We're going to take the chicken and we're going to cut it lengthwise just like we're doing with the knife there. We usually get three pieces out of this so it always feels like we're getting a lot more food. So now we're going to season lightly with garlic salt and pepper as this will be the main source of seasoning for this dish. So now let's prep up the shrimp before we get to breading. What you want to do here is place small cuts on the belly or wherever you see the most bend as shrimp naturally are curled into shape. Making the decisions keeps them straight and allows them to skewer them and then make them into nice katsu fillets. After you cut the shrimp, put some skewers to hold them in place and let's get to breading. Let's start off the breading process by adding some garlic salt into the flour. This adds a ton of flavor to the katsu and goes well with both the shrimp and the chicken. So we're going to start off here with 1 cup of seasoned flour, 2 beaten eggs, and 1 cup of panko breadcrumbs. For both the chicken and the shrimp, we're going to start off with the seasoned flour, then the eggs, and finish with the breadcrumbs. I used to go for this thing called the dry hand, wet hand method, but I found it was just easier to just use one hand for all of this. Sure, it'll stick a lot to your hands, but you can just wipe it off after the process is done. It's just so much faster this way. Just rinse and repeat for all the chicken and the shrimp until everything is nice and coated. Then lie everything down on a baking tray and then cook for 20 minutes at 400 degrees Fahrenheit or 204 degrees Celsius. So now let's get onto the curry. Just to note here, we've made way too much for this recipe, so we'll have the correct measurements in the description below. This is double the amount, so just eye out half of this if you make it for yourself. Into a large wok, let's put in 1 tablespoon of oil and then caramelize the onions for 10 minutes. For this amount of curry, most recipes call for 2-3 to three tablespoons so we'll be saving a ton of fat macros for this dish. Once the onions are nice and caramelized, let's add in 2 cups of water and let the water come to a boil. After the water starts boiling, we're going to put the potatoes in first as these take the longest to cook along with the onions. Boil for another 10 minutes and let's get on to our next vegetables. Up next we have the carrots and the squash as these are next in line for the longest cook time. Boil for another 5 minutes and wait till everything is nice and tender. After the carrots, potatoes, onions and squash are all done cooking, this is where we want to add in the instant curry cubes and the spicy curry packet if you guys want some spice. You can totally just use red chili flakes here as well if you can't find the spicy curry packets. These are actually not that bad when I looked at the label, it's 90 calories per serving and we only use 2 for this whole thing. Since we used 2, you can definitely just go for 1 as like I said from earlier, we made way too much here. The ingredient list also shows that there is MSG in here which is totally fine to eat. I've attached a study again from examine.com that shows some research as to why it's fine to eat for most of us looking for some flavor. We're just gonna let everything dissolve here and let the curry thicken before we add the rest of our veggies. This will probably only take around two to three minutes. Now that the curry is thickened, let's add in the rest of our veggies and stir it in for a couple minutes. If you grew up in an Asian household, then you probably had this a ton in your life. It's actually really not bad to eat as its macros come out to be 4.5 grams of fat, 10 grams of carbs, and one gram of protein. Just don't put too much of it and you'll be good to go. Now it's time to slice everything up and place it in your bento boxes. This recipe comes out to 6 different meals as you can choose to make either the shrimp or chicken katsu. We'll have the nutrition facts for each kind in the description below so let us know which one you guys made. We've also been getting a lot of questions about these bento boxes so if you want to check them out, I put a link in the description below. It is an affiliate link so it would support the channel if you were to buy some. We also went for a panna shape here because well, why not right? 
So we ended up putting half a cup of curry, around 120 grams of rice, and 5 ounces of chicken or shrimp katsu into each of these. We'll have the nutrition facts for you down in the description so you guys can see what our calculations came out to be. We had so much fun making this bento box and I really think that's the beauty of meal prepping as well. You can play around with it and make it look really awesome if you have the extra time. We would love to see your guys' rendition of the foods we make here on the channel so make sure to tag us at Aspire Fitness Walnut on Instagram. And there you guys have it. We have this really awesome curry katsu dish that used way less oil as we didn't fry our katsu and use minimal oil within our curry. We're so excited to see that the channel is growing and we are so happy to have you guys comment on our videos. If you guys made these for yourselves, let us know and send us a picture of it if you can. Anyways, if you guys liked the video, make sure to like and subscribe. Also, let us know what other foods you guys would like to see on the channel. We got a really fun bento box video coming up for the next one, so we'll definitely be seeing you guys then.